In my opinion, Loki is the best villain in the MCU. Sorry, Thanos. And he's one of my favorite characters in this universe. I even named my dog after him. He's an Aussie and has one green eye, one blue eye. He's awesome. Follow me on Instagram if you want to see more of him. I linked it down below. Anyway, Loki has an interesting arc, going from good to bad to good to bad and so on. In this video, I'm going to give a tribute to the God of Mischief and go through the entire MCU, including the films, some tie-in comics, and some other tie-ins that are canon to the MCU, and explain his life story as sort of a recap. Plus, I'm going to dive into what's next for his character after Endgame. Obviously, there are spoilers, so you've been warned. Now let's get started. Loki was the son of Laufey, the Frost Giant's king, and was born on the Frost Giant's home, Jotunheim. When he was born, he was small and weak for a frost giant, and because of this, his father abandoned him. He left him in a temple where he was meant to die. Around the same time, in 965 AD, there was a war between the frost giants and the Asgardians, and when the war ended, he was found by the Asgardian ruler, King Odin. Not wanting to leave them, Odin adopted Loki after defeating the frost giants in war. To take away his naturally blue skin, he used sorcery to alter his appearance, making him blend in with the other Asgardians. Odin raised Loki with his wife Frigga, alongside their birth son and Loki's brother, Thor. Loki had no idea that he was adopted, and grew up feeling like he was in Thor's shadow, envious to the fact that Thor was meant to be king instead of him. Odin always tried to teach the two boys the value of peace above war when dealing with their enemies. One day when he told them this in the treasure room, Odin told both of them that only one of them could be king, and because Thor was the oldest, he was destined for the throne, though there were other reasons why it was Thor and not Loki, which Loki did not find out until later. While Thor's lust for leading armies and leading battles grew, Loki's personal jealousy of Thor grew even more. He was desperate to prove to his father that he was just as great and just as worthy as Thor to take the throne, but it never made any difference. No matter what, he remained in his brother's shadow. This took a toll on Loki, changing his personality for the worse. Where he was once aloof and carefree, Loki had slowly become ambitious, going to great lengths to achieve greatness without any care of the consequences for others. As long as Loki himself profited, it did not matter what happened to anyone else. Loki lacked interest in Asgardian warrior arts, and instead focused on sorcery, something his mother Frigga was very skilled in. Loki had a soft spot for his mother, and she taught him everything that he knew about sorcery, something that bonded the two even further. After several years of working with his mother, he was an expert in Asgardian magic, gaining the ability to conjure illusions of himself and other things around him. Frigga regarded teaching Loki magic as a way for him to prove his worth against his brother. As boys, Loki used his magic to pull pranks on Thor, once using a skill with illusions to become a snake, and when Thor picked him up to admire the snake, Loki dispelled the illusion and stabbed him. On another occasion, Loki used his magic to transform Thor into a frog. One day, Odin took Loki and Thor to visit Earth, specifically Norway. There they taught the humans in Norway their language and culture, and displayed their abilities. This caused the people from Norway to believe the Asgardians to be gods who looked down upon them. They named Loki the God of Mischief, due to the various tricks and illusions that he displayed, and named Thor the God of Thunder. When the time came to name one of the brothers king, Thor was of course chosen, and before the ceremony, Loki said that while he was sometimes envious of Thor's place as firstborn, there was no doubt that he loved him dearly. Despite being so supportive, however, he watched with envy and desire for that to be him. Loki was so envious that he took drastic measures to mess up Thor's big day and put all of Asgard at risk, opening a portal for the Frost Giants to arrive without Heimdall being able to see. This was a great feat, as Heimdall was the gatekeeper who saw all, and this was the first time he was not able to see something, which Loki managed to do using his magic. The Frost Giants broke into Asgard and attempted to steal the Casket of Ancient Winters, a weapon that was originally in their possession before their great war against Asgard. Odin called the Destroyer to kill the invading Frost Giants, but not before they killed a handful of Asgardian warriors. Loki, Thor, and Odin made their way to Odin's vault to investigate, and when they arrived, they found the bodies of the Frost Giants and the Asgardians who had all been killed. Enraged, Thor demanded Odin march into Jotunheim and attack the Frost Giants, but Odin refused. When Thor continued to argue, Loki stayed silent, working out his own plan. To put his plan into action, Loki manipulated Thor by agreeing with him that their father was wrong and saying that he too thought that the Frost Giants deserved revenge for their attack. Just as Loki had planned, Thor decided to attack Jotunheim and confront King Laufey, who neither of them at the time knew was actually Loki's father. Loki sat back and allowed Thor to convince Lady Sif and the Warriors 3 to go with him, and the icing on the cake of Loki's manipulation was him briefly claiming to be against such aggressive action. Before they left, Loki went behind Thor and the others back, telling a guard to inform Odin where they were going to ensure their rescue and Thor's punishment. When they got there, Thor and King Laufey of the Frost Giants got into an argument, and after Laufey insulted both Thor and Odin, 
Raiden, a huge fight broke out as the Frost Giant's army moved toward them. During the fight, if the Frost Giants touched the others, it burned them, but when Loki was touched, it instead turned a skin blue resembling that of the Frost Giants. Eventually, the fight was stopped by a very angry Odin who brought Loki, Thor, and the others home, but not before King Laufey told him that they had restarted their long war. When they got back, Loki watched as Odin banished Thor to Earth, leaving the throne open for Loki just as he had planned. Later on, Sif and the Warriors 3 begged Loki to convince Odin to allow Thor to come home, but he refused. I love Thor more dearly than any of you, but you know what he is. He's arrogant, he's reckless, he's dangerous. You saw how he was today. Is that what Asgard needs from its king? After seeing his skin turn blue at the touch of the Frost Giants, Loki decided to investigate further and went to touch the Casket of Ancient Winters. Upon doing this, his skin once again turned blue, but this time on his whole body. His worst fear had come true. He discovered that he was not as guardian, but rather was a frost giant. His whole life had been a lie, and the very man that lied to him stood right behind him. When he asked Odin what he was, Odin told him that he was his son, and when Loki asked for more, Odin told him the truth of his heritage, being King Laufey's son. Loki immediately asked why he adopted him, knowing that there was an ulterior motive, but Odin stayed quiet until Loki yelled, begging him for the truth. Odin then confessed that he had hoped to use Loki as a bridge to unite Asgard and Jotunheim. So I am no more than another stolen relic, locked up here until you might have use of me. Tears began to fill in Loki's eyes as he asked why he didn't tell him what he was from the beginning. I wanted only to protect you from the truth. What, because I, I, I am the monster that parents tell their children about at night? Loki then became enraged and said it all made sense why he favored Thor for all those years. Because no matter how much you claim to love me, you could never have a frost giant sitting on the throne of Asgard. Loki's yelling sent Odin into the Odin sleep, a state where he has to recharge the Odin force, the magical force that gives him his power. Loki became deeply upset about what he had done and slowly went to hold his father's hand and desperately called out for help. Guys, please help! With Thor gone and his father unable to rule, Loki took the throne. When Sif and the Warriors 3 went to see Odin to ask him to end Thor's banishment, they were shocked to see Loki in the throne who denied their request. To ensure that Thor would not return, Loki paid him a visit on Earth and told him that their father had died, saying that the war against the Frost Giants and Thor's banishment had been too much for him. Loki doing this ensured that Thor was kept completely unmotivated to return home and was emotionally destroyed just as Loki had planned. He lied even further, saying that Thor's banishment from Asgard was the only thing keeping peace and told him that their mother forbid his return, another cruel lie. Thor sadly agreed and said goodbye to his brother, thanking him for coming, and from then on, he vowed to stay on Earth after causing so much pain for his family and his people. Before leaving Earth, Loki tried to lift Thor's hammer to see if he was worthy of it, but he was of course not. Him being a liar, a manipulator, and a traitor ensured that. Loki then went to Jotunheim and confessed to the Frost Giants that he was the one who let them into Asgard on the day of Thor's crowning. He then told them that he would let Laufey and a small army into Asgard to kill Odin where he lay, and told them that they could take the Casket of Ancient Winters, which Odin had taken from them during the Great War against Asgard. When he returned to Asgard, Heimdall questioned him when he was once again blocked, this time of what Loki was doing, and Loki then reminded him that he was his king now. When Loki learned that Sif and the Warriors 3 went to Earth, he knew that Thor would figure out everything he told him was a lie, so for damage control, he sent the Destroyer to wipe out all of those who opposed him. He then confronted Heimdall, and when Heimdall said that he knew of his betrayal to Asgard, letting the Frost Giants in, he drew his sword, only for Loki to freeze him using the Casket of Ancient Winters. Meanwhile, the Destroyer began leveling the whole town that Thor, Sif, and the others were in. To put a stop to this, Thor walked up, completely unarmed and without powers. He pleaded with Loki. Brother, whatever I have done to wrong you, whatever I have done to lead you to do this, I am truly sorry. When it looked like all was well, Loki then had the Destroyer punch Thor in the face, which ended up taking his life. Loki thought it was over, but Thor regained his power, becoming worthy of his hammer again, and he came back to Asgard. Loki's plans with the Frost Giants moved forward, and though he told Laufey that he could kill Odin, Loki had set his birth father up and killed Laufey before he got the chance, making Loki look like a hero in front of his mother. Loki, you saved him. Thor walked in right after that, however, and Loki watched as their mother ran to Thor, despite the fact that he had just supposedly saved their father. He had a look of jealousy and extreme hurting on his face, desperate to be as loved as Thor. Thor then exposed everything that Loki had done to their mother. You're a talented liar, brother, always have been. He then blasted Thor and went to destroy Jotunheim using the Bifrost, desperate to prove that he was a worthy son, taking out Asgard's greatest enemy. 
When Thor went to stop him, Loki revealed to Thor his true feelings, how he just wanted to prove to Odin that he was a worthy son, and admitted that all he ever wanted was to be Thor's equal. The two fought until Thor put his hammer on Loki, making him unable to move, and he later destroyed the Bifrost to save the Frost Giant's home from being destroyed. As the Bifrost fell apart, the brothers were saved by Odin, who had awakened. Loki looked up at his father, tears in his eyes, saying that he did it all for him. I could have done it, father! I could have done it! For you! But his father once again dismissed him. No, Loki. This broke Loki's heart, as he felt more distant from his father than ever. He felt that he had failed in the eyes of the one man he was desperate to please. The pain of failing again led him to let go and fall to what looked like his apparent death. He, however, was not gone. He merely traveled through a wormhole and arrived in a part of a universe called Sanctuary, also referred to as Chitauri Space, which was the name of an asteroid field inhabited by the Chitauri and was the domain of Thanos until 2018. Loki met the Mad Titan, who told him that he could be the ruler of Earth if he could get him the Tesseract, which was being studied by S.H.I.E.L.D. at the time. Thanos gave Loki a scepter with the capability of controlling people's minds, harnessing the power of the Mind Stone that was inside of it. Unbeknownst to Loki, his use of the scepter was also influencing him, fueling his hatred and desire to harm humans and his brother Thor. Thanos showed him how to temporarily control someone's mind, and Loki went to Earth to take control of Dr. Eric Selvik's mind. While he was controlling him, he met Fury and saw the Tesseract. Well, I guess that's worth a look. Well, I guess that's worth a look. Loki's mother Frigga was the first in Asgard to find out that Loki had in fact survived, but she decided not to tell anyone right away, and instead went straight to Loki, trying to contact him. Loki however told her it was not a good time and shut her out. With the task of unlocking the Tesseract's secrets, Selvig came to understand the cube's capabilities, and through Loki's influence, he developed equipment that would focus its power. When the time was right, Loki activated the Tesseract, forming a portal that pulled him through space to its location on Earth, which was the main facility of Project Pegasus. Loki went there and put Hawkeye, Selvig, and another agent under his control using the scepter that Thanos had given him, took the Tesseract, and destroyed the base, fleeing with one of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s best agents and scientists. Later, when Loki talked to the other, he he lost his temper, yelling that he was a king. I was a king! The rightful king of Asgard. The other finished the conversation by threatening Loki, saying that if he did not get the Tesseract and bring it to Thanos, Thanos would come for him. There will be no realm, no barren moon, no crevice where he cannot find you. Loki put more and more people under his control, and for their next move, Loki caused a distraction while Hawkeye stole what they needed to stabilize the portal that they planned to open. Loki went into a gala in Germany and copied his target's eye to allow Hawkeye to break into the vault successfully. Loki then took it too far by making the humans kneel before him, only to be stopped and captured by Captain America and Iron Man. On the jet back, however, Thor arrived after being told of his survival by his mother, and he took Loki from the ship, furious at his brother, but also very relieved that he was not dead. When Thor said that they were raised together as brothers, Loki told him that all he remembered was a shadow, living in the shade of Thor's greatness. Thor told him that Earth was under his protection because the woman that he loved was there, and Loki told him the flaws of humans and said that he would rule over them. Thor begged Loki to give all of this up and come home. You give up the Tesseract! You give up this poisonous dream! Come home. They were interrupted by Iron Man, and after Iron Man, Thor, and Captain America fought, they all brought Loki back to the helicarrier where he was locked up. Loki, however, had a plan, which he formed while being escorted to his confinement. He saw Banner, aka the Hulk, and smiled at him. His plan was to make Banner turn into the Hulk, and in that chaos, he would escape. To ensure that this would happen, he had Hawkeye and the other agents that were under his control follow the signal of the scepter and help ensure his escape. Loki was later manipulated by Black Widow, who got him to reveal his plan, but by that time it was too late. Hawkeye was already on his way. While the Avengers were fighting, Hawkeye showed up and his attack turned Banner into the Hulk, just as Loki had planned. One of Loki's agents freed him and brought him his scepter, and when Thor arrived, he tricked his brother into going into the cell using his magic. Using that same magic, he tricked Coulson and stabbed him from behind, then sent Thor in the cell that he was in, falling to the ground. He escaped successfully, but in the chaos, he lost his control over Hawkeye, but he still had Selvig. To continue their plans of opening the portal for the Chitauri army to come through, they went to Stark Tower. There, he was confronted by Iron Man, who he failed to put under his control, so instead he threw him out the window. They successfully opened the portal, and the Chitauri army arrived, starting the Battle of New York. 
During the battle, Thor begged Loki to stop this, and when Loki said it was too late, Thor said that they could still stop it if they worked together. Loki thought about it for a second, but when he remembered the threat that Thanos posed to him, Loki realized that he had to do this and stabbed his brother. The two fought, and when Thor overpowered him, Loki made a quick escape. Loki later came face to face with the Hulk, and he was smashed in the ground several times, putting an end to his fighting in the battle. With Loki barely able to move after the Hulk was done with him, the portal being closed, and the Chitauri army being destroyed, Loki had failed his mission and was captured by the Avengers. After being captured, Loki made fun of Captain America, turning into him and mocking what he had just said. This made Thor bound to him, making him unable to speak. As they were taking Loki out, Alexander Pierce and his strike agents attempted to claim custody of Loki for his crimes against humanity as well as take the Tesseract. Thor however rejected this and said that he was to face his crimes on Asgard. Thor took Loki and the Tesseract back home and the Tesseract was stored in Odin's vault while Loki was brought to Odin to face justice. As he was brought before his father, Loki's mother begged him not to make things worse. Frigga had pleaded with Odin, begging him to keep Loki alive, which Odin agreed to do. When Loki said that being on the throne was his birthright, Odin screamed, Your birthright was to die! referring to how he saved Loki as a baby. He then told Loki that the only reason he was alive was because of his mother, but then said that he would never see her again. Odin forever banished Loki to the dungeons in Asgard, where he would spend the rest of his life. The only entertainment that Loki got was watching new prisoners come in and reading books that his mother had sent him. Over the course of the next year, a war raged outside of his cell as a result of Thor destroying the Bifrost Bridge during the events of the first Thor film. This was of course Loki's fault, as it was the only way to stop Jotunheim from being destroyed by Loki. Loki occasionally got visits from his mother despite what his father had said. She did this using her magic, making herself like a projection in his cell, and she was once again there for him, making his cell as comfortable as possible. Loki was touched that his mother stood up for his life to Odin. He allowed himself to get closer to Frigga than anyone else, and he truly loved her. One day when he was talking to her, she tried to get him to consider his actions during the Battle of New York and accept his crimes, but it ended in Loki yelling at her that Odin was not his father. Then am I not your mother? You're not. Loki realized that he had made a mistake and tried to touch her hand, but the projection went away as he did so. He felt terribly, yelling and breaking the heart of the person that he loved more than anyone else. Later that day, Asgard was attacked by Dark Elves, and in the chaos, Frigga was killed. Loki had no idea of her death, still upset about his fight with his mother earlier. He sat and read one of the books that Frigga had sent him, and all he could do was think about seeing his mother again to tell her that he did not mean what he had said. As he was reading, however, a guard informed Loki of Frigga's death, and he was overcome with emotion. He smashed his furniture, destroyed his cell, and screamed in agony and anger. Loki was a mess and could not stop thinking about the last words that he had said to her, breaking her heart, saying that she wasn't his true mother. He did not mean what he said and wished that he could tell her that. When Thor came to visit him, he used his magic to show himself as well put together and the cell back to how it was. But when Thor told him no more illusions, Loki showed his true pathetic self. Now you see me, brother. Thor knew that Loki was the only one who knew how to get in and out of Asgard without being seen, as he had done it many times, including letting the Frost Giants in during Thor's crowning. Thor told Loki that if he helped him sneak out of Asgard, then he would allow Loki to have vengeance upon those who had killed their mother. Loki agreed, and the two brothers along with Jane Foster successfully escaped Asgard without being seen. The brothers later fought, screaming at each other about their mother. We let her die? What help were you and yourself who put me there? Who put me there? You know damn well. You know damn well. But Thor put a stop to it, saying that she would not want them to fight. When they arrived and faced the Dark Elves, who had killed their mother, they staged a fight with each other, and when the time was right, they revealed their plan. Loki, now! When the Dark Elves fought back, opening a black hole, Loki saved Jane from being sucked into it, and in doing so, almost got sucked in himself, but Thor saved him just in time. Loki single-handedly fought a bunch of Dark Elves using only his knife, and took all of them down with ease. He then went to save Thor from Curse by stabbing him, but Curse took Loki and pulled him forward, stabbing him with the same blade that Loki had stabbed him with. Loki successfully put a black hole grenade on him before he fell to the ground, killing Curse. Thor ran over to Loki, who thought he was dying. Thor told him that he would tell their father of his heroism, but Loki said he didn't do it for him, but rather for Thor. And then Loki appeared to die in his brother's arms.
What Thor saw, however, was merely an illusion, and though Loki was badly hurt, he did not die. Loki waited for Thor and Jane to leave, and when they did, he made the illusion go away. When an Asgardian guard came to check the battlefield, Loki attacked and killed him, and took his place using his magic, and returned to Asgard. He then told Odin, still disguised as the Asgardian guard, that they had found Loki's dead body. Loki later sent his father away, and took his place on the throne, using his magic to make himself look like Odin. To protect his identity, he banished Lady Sif, worried that she would discover who he was, and gave Thor free reign to act as he pleased to keep the Nine Realms at peace, ensuring that he would be away from home. He also banished Heimdall and replaced him with Scourge, whose real job was to inform him if Thor returned to Asgard. He made the Asgardians worship Loki as a hero, whose loss was severe to all, even making a statue of himself, and a play reenacting his heroic death. He led his Odin, enjoying the power and pleasure that came with being king. Loki stayed in this position for four years, but one day, Thor unexpectedly arrived, and Scourge failed to do his job and warned Loki of his arrival. Thor made Loki reveal himself, and ordered Loki to show him where their father was. He ended up not being there, and Loki was taken by Doctor Strange, who saw him as a threat to Earth. And while Strange talked to Thor, he made Loki fall for 30 minutes. Loki and Thor then found their father, and Odin revealed that he had broken from Loki's magic, but told Loki that his mother would be proud of him for casting such an effective spell. This shocked Loki, who had never heard such praise from Odin. Odin then told them about their sister Hela and said that she was coming. He then told his sons that he loved them both, and he floated away, gone forever. These words stayed with Loki. His father died saying that he loved him despite the monstrosities that he had committed. These words meant that his father finally accepted him as a worthy son. Their sister Hela then arrived and followed them as they were going back to Asgard. On their way there, she kicked Loki off course and he arrived on Sakaar. He assumed that Thor had been killed by Hela and had no intention of going back to Asgard. Instead, he planned to stay on Sakaar, and he quickly fell into the favor of the Grand Master and was even invited to watch the Contest of Champions, a gladiatorial-like fight from the Grand Master's own box seat. For the next few weeks, he relaxed, drank, and told stories of his life, which greatly entertained many of the people on the planet. After a few weeks had gone by, however, he was shocked to see Thor arrive on the planet while being prepped to fight in the Contest of Champions. Loki asked Thor to give up Asgard in this fight and to live in luxury with him next to the Grand Master. When he refused, Loki watched Thor fight, and to his horror, Thor's competitor was the Hulk, who had smashed the hell out of Loki during the Battle of New York. I have to get off this planet. Puny God. When Thor and Hulk escaped, Loki along with Valkyrie were brought before the Grand Master, and they said that they would catch them. But as they left, the two fought each other, and Loki discovered that she was the last living Valkyrie. It must be a very painful memory. Loki made her relive their massacre, and when she snapped out of it, she knocked Loki out and chained him up in her room. She later brought Thor and Banner to him, and though Banner was mistrustful of Loki, they all decided to go back to Asgard and put a stop to Hela. Loki teamed up with Thor to steal one of the Grand Master's ships, and used an old bit that they had made when they were younger. Get help! Please! My brother is dying! Get help! Help him! Oh, classic. Oh, I still hate it. It's humiliating. No, not for me it's not. Loki told Thor that Odin had brought them together, and it seemed poetic that his death should break them apart. Thor agreed that Loki should stay on Sakaar, saying that the place was perfect for him. Did you just agree with me? Thor then opened up to his brother, saying that he thought the world of him, and said that he had thought that they would fight side by side together. Words that Loki had always wanted to hear, that they would fight together as equals, something he craved since the very first Thor film. I only ever wanted to be your equal. Unfortunately, Loki went on to do what the god of mischief is always expected to do. He turned on Thor, but this time, Thor was prepared. Oh dear brother, becoming predictable. Thor left with the ship, and Loki remained on the ground until Korg and the rebels found him, and together, they all went to Asgard in a gigantic ship. Loki arrived just in time to get all of the Asgardians onto the ship and safe from Hela. Your savior! Loki was welcomed back by Heimdall, Heimdall now seeing the good in Loki, a man who had nothing but mistrust towards the god of mischief in the past. Loki helped fight off Hela's army, and when Thor used his full power, Loki smiled admiringly, proud of his brother. When they realized that the only way to stop their sister was to cause Ragnarok, Thor told Loki to go to Odin's vault and unleash it. 
While he was there, he saw the Tesseract, the thing that he had failed to get years earlier in the Battle of New York. He took it with him, and when they unleashed Ragnarok, Loki joined Thor and the entire population of Asgard on the ship, and they all watched as their home was destroyed beyond repair. While on the ship, Thor said to Loki that he wasn't bad after all, and said that if he was actually there, he would give him a hug, referencing the fact that every time he was in front of Loki, it was a mirage. But this time, when Thor threw something at Loki, Loki caught it and said to his brother, I'm here. Loki had finally been accepted by his brother, his people, and finally had his redemption. They decided to go to Earth to start a new life there, but on their way, they were stopped by another ship that belonged to Thanos and his Black Order. They slaughtered half of the Asgardians, and Loki, held at gunpoint, was told by Thanos to either give him the Tesseract or to watch Thor die. And after a few seconds of seeing his brother in agony, he agreed to give it to him. However, this was a trick as the Hulk stepped in, but Thanos took the Hulk down and got the Tesseract anyway. When Thanos said that two more stones were on Earth, Loki stepped forward. As he gave his full name, he added Odin's son while looking at Thor to let his brother know that he was still good and was not helping the Mad Titan. Thor watched as Loki drew a dagger behind him and attempted to stab Thanos. Thanos, however, stopped him with ease and lifted Loki by the neck. Loki struggled and writhed as Thanos squeezed tighter and tighter. In his last dying breaths, he told Thanos that he would never be a god. Thanos gave one last squeeze and Loki drew his last breath. After dropping Loki's limp body, he said to Thor that there would be no resurrections this time. The god of mischief lay dead among his fellow brothers and sisters of Asgard. Loki died trying to protect the universe, a changed man who had finally proven himself to so many who doubted his worth. Odin, Thor, Heimdall, Bruce Banner, and many others who later heard of his heroic death. Thor would go on to seek revenge for Loki. In his first attempt, he failed, but in his second attempt, he was successful, slicing Thanos' head off. Well, that is the end for that Loki. There is a chance for an alternate timeline of Loki to still exist in the MCU. In Endgame, we saw the Avengers go back in time and mess some things up. When they went back to the Battle of New York in 2012, the Tesseract was knocked right to a captured and defeated Loki, which he took full advantage of and used it to open a portal and escape. Now, Captain America did put the stones back where they got them to ensure that the timeline remained intact, but the space stone that he put back was not the one from 2012, but rather the one from the 1940s, which they had to get after failing to get the 2012 one. This means that Loki could still be alive, and based on the fact that he's getting his own TV show, which right now is called Loki, starring Tom Hiddleston, I think it very likely that it will be about the Loki that escaped in 2012 in this alternate timeline. Some are saying that it could be a prequel, as he is thousands of years old, so there's a lot of time to fill in, but I think it would be far more interesting and appealing for the writers to explore the Loki that they spent the last 8 years building, the first Thor movie coming out in 2011. So I think we can all look forward to this new Loki series, and because of this video, you are now caught up on everything you need to know about Loki before the series begins. Thanks so much for watching guys, you can follow me on social media, Links for that will be in the description. And I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons listed below. If you want to be listed on my next video, plus a bunch of other rewards, check out my Patreon which is linked down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you press that subscribe button to help grow the channel. Again, thank you so much for watching and look out for more great videos on the way.